So let's look at the following example in which we're going to calculate the electric field. An electron is moving in the positive direction along the x-axis with a constant velocity of 3 times 10 to the 7 meters per second. So that electron then enters a constant electric field that is parallel to the motion of that electron. And that electron comes to rest after travels 10 more centimeters. So using this information, calculate the magnitude and direction of the electric field required to stop our electron. So let's begin by looking at diagram A. So we have an electron that is traveling to the left in the positive direction along the x-axis. And it's traveling with a constant velocity given by this quantity. 3 times 10 to the 7 meters per second. Now eventually that electron enters a constant electric field and that constant electric field exerts a force on that electron, stopping that electron after travels for 10 centimeters. So that means our initial velocity right when it enters the constant electric field is given by this magnitude and the final velocity after travels 10 centimeters is given to be 0 meters per second. So in what direction should this electric field act? Well, because our force must act in this direction towards the left along our x-axis and because our electron has a negative charge, that implies that the electric field should point to the left along our x-axis in the opposite direction of the force. So in order to stop the electron, an electric field must point to the right along the x-axis. This field will create a force that will point in the opposite direction, meaning to the left. So our force that is created by the electric field points to the left, and that is what stops our electron. So, let's begin with part one. We want to find what our acceleration is in terms of x, in terms of our distance. If we find the acceleration, we can use the second law of motion to solve for our electric field. So, we know because we're dealing with a constant deceleration because our electric field and therefore our force is constant, that means we can use the kinematics equation. So, our final velocity squared is equal to our initial velocity squared plus 2 times a times x. Now, notice our final velocity is 0. So, we can solve for our a and we see that a is equal to initial velocity squared divided by 2 times the distance it travels. So now we use this result and we plug it in for the a in the second law of motion. So force equals m times a. Now the force as a result of a field is equal to q times e, where q is our charge of the electron and e is our electric field. And this is equal to mass multiplied by a, which is now replaced with the following ratio. So we can take this equation and solve for our E. And we see that E is equal to M multiplied by the initial velocity squared divided by 2 multiplied by our displacement multiplied by Q. Now the mass of one electron is 9.11 times 10 to the negative 31 kilograms. Our initial velocity is this quantity and we square it. Our X is 0 0.1 meters because we have to convert from centimeters to meters. And our Q, our charge of one electron, is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. So we plug this into our calculator and we see that our electric field is this large. So this is our magnitude of the electric field and the electric field points in the positive direction along our x-axis.